you've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube. A lot of people can't get that, so it's pretty good. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the SMSU Mustangs assistant volleyball coach, Coach Taylor Reese. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get into college coaching? Well, honestly, after I finished my collegiate career playing, I honestly didn't know if I wanted to coach. It wasn't something I really thought about um, throughout the years, but it was about a year after I was done. Um, I kind of felt like volleyball was missing from my life. And obviously as a division two player, um, especially with volleyball in general, there's not a lot of opportunity after college. Um, obviously that you can play overseas and they're just starting a league in the States, but outside of that, there's not a lot of ways you can continue after college. So, um, I knew I wanted to continue having volleyball in my life in some way. So I kind of thought more of maybe I should get into coaching. Um, and I was in my last year of my master's degree and I reached out to the coaches at SMSU, um, and talked to them about potentially working with them. I also needed an internship for my master's degree. So I thought it'd work out perfectly if I could do that while I'm um, getting to get a little of experience in coaching. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I was at. Um, I have loved it so far. Um, it's just a way for me to kind of get my competitiveness out. Um, I haven't really had that outlet since I've been done playing volleyball. So I thought that getting in coaching might be a way for me to continue to be involved, um, with volleyball in some way. What was it like, obviously playing for SMSU? Um, I loved it. A lot of girls on the team I have known from years because I grew up about 15 minutes from um, the town the college is in. So very familiar with the college and the players. I actually got to play with um, a girl. Her name is Megan Larson. She was my setter for three years in college and I played all throughout high school with her. So it was really cool to get to experience that in college too after playing with her in high school. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I love the atmosphere. It's such a competitive conference um, and our team is just competitive in general. And I think that that is a place where I thought that I fit in well. Um, a lot of high expectations, um, a lot of tough competition, um, whether that's even on your own team or other teams are playing in the conference. So I really enjoyed the atmosphere I got to play in. I enjoyed all the girls I got to play with and the coaching staff was wonderful as well. What was that like, obviously, playing so close to your home and having your family obviously be that close to you? I loved it. It was an opportunity because all my family is from around the surrounding area, so a lot of them were able to come to games. Even people from my hometown were able to come to games, so I really love that because even being in college, a lot of people don't get to have kind of that home atmosphere while they're playing in college. It's not the same as playing in high school. So that's one thing that I really enjoyed is I still got to play in front of a lot of people I knew while getting to play collegiately. So I really enjoyed getting to play in front of my friends and family almost every home game that I had. What were some of your college accomplishments as a player? Um, as a player, I received the freshman of the year in the conference my freshman year player of the year in the conference, my sophomore, junior, senior year. And then I received the national player of the year, my junior and senior year. And I also received the national athlete of the year for division two, which is presented by Honda. Um, but I think be, be, being able to get those accomplishments, I wouldn't have had that if I wasn't on the team that I was. I played with so many amazing players and volleyball is such a team sport that you can't be successful unless you have other people on the court that are can get you there as well so I think a lot of my accomplishments I have to credit them to my coaches for coaching me and the players that I played with too that helped me um, be successful and not only individual accomplishments but we had a lot of accomplishments as a team too that at times I felt meant more to me than any of the individual accomplishments did. 
How is that feeling as a player getting to put on that gold jersey for SMSU? It was great. I mean, we go to so many other um, schools in the conference, and I there's very few that get, I would say, as many fans as we do. So just to get to play in front of that many people and to have that many fans come and support you for all your home games. Um, it's just an incredible experience. You know that the atmosphere is going to be fun. Um, they're just, they're fun to play in front of. I mean, that crowd and that energy can help you so much in games. Um, playing at home is obviously way funner than playing away just because you get that atmosphere of your fans and they just bring so much to the games that makes the game so much more fun and so much more exciting so yeah I'd say I wouldn't have traded playing at SMSU for anywhere else. How was that feeling like coming out of college obviously being a grad assistant for SMSU? It was interesting at first because coming back obviously I'd been gone for a few years but there was still especially with the COVID year there were still a few girls that still had eligibility remaining that I actually played with so there would have been three girls on the team this past fall that I actually had played with so it's an interesting um, transition from going from being a teammate to a coach but I think me being gone for a few years helped there's a lot of new girls that I really haven't ever worked with so I got to um, work with a lot of them and get to meet them. Um, but I really enjoyed getting to coach the girls that I have played with because we just had a bond already. And they kind of knew that I was there looking out for their best interests. And I wanted them to be successful and I wanted the team to be success successful. So I really enjoyed getting to coach, um, whether it was the new girls or the girls that I had played with before, but it was definitely a transition. I'm going from, obviously, you have your connection as teammates and having to kind of draw that boundary from teammates to coach and player relationship. Of course, what was that difference? Like, obviously, as you said, you only had a few girls that you actually played with, and then most of them were new people. What was that transition like and difference? Honestly, the transition wasn't um, that hard because uh, the girls were the older ones on the team so they have experience too and they kind of understand like the different what was nice was that they felt comfortable talking to me because they know I've been through the program and I could offer a lot of advice if they needed especially the new girls too they knew that I've been through it before uh, I've experienced it before I know what it takes to be successful on the team so I think it was an easy transition because they trusted my advice and they trusted what I had to say and they knew that I had experienced it all before and that I just am looking out for them and their best interests and what's going to help them make them successful. Of course during your time as a grad assistant what are some things that you learned to help you at now as an assistant coach? I think a lot goes into being a coach. As a player you don't really see the coaching side of it um, but I enjoyed being on that side. Um, I think the biggest thing that I learned is just everyone has different, um, I'd say learning styles. How I would like to be coached isn't the same way that other girls would like to be coached. I think that was the biggest thing I learned throughout coaching is you can't, you can coach them all the same way at times, but everyone also has their own learning style. Everyone learns differently. Not everyone's going to respond to maybe the same criticism that I would respond to or other players. So kind of learning that every single player is different and you kind of have to meet everyone's needs and kind of coach everyone similarly, but everyone um, obviously learns on their own and likes to be critiqued a certain way or responds to things a certain way. So I think that's the biggest thing I probably learned um, transitioning as a coach. Course, during the game day, what is it like obviously being on the sideline as an assistant coach versus obviously during your time playing? Honestly, it's hard at times because you just want to jump in there and you want to play. I miss playing so much, but I think when you're playing, you don't really get to see the bigger picture of everything going on. And I think that's what's fun as being a coach is you can see um, all the little things that are going on and all the little things that need critiquing and where we can be better in certain aspects. And that's not something you really see when you're on the court. So I really enjoyed getting to be on the sidelines and getting to coach them from the sidelines and help them with anything that I saw that I thought could be um, helpful to them. I think volleyball really is 
most of it is just skill, but a lot of it is strategic as well. So getting to kind of see everything from the sideline and help um, the girls with strategy and what I think would work best for them during the game. Um, I think it was super fun to get to be on that side of it. Of course, during practice as a coach, what is that like, obviously still being able to play volleyball with some of the team and obviously coaching them to tell them how this opponent will face like? Uh, I think um, as a coaching staff and anyone in um, coaching college knows that scouting your opponent and stuff is uh, very important and very beneficial. Um, so I think that uh, you have to go into the games prepared. And I think we do that very well in practices along with during the games. Uh, we try to make our practices as competitive as possible. So if that means I need to get thrown in and play a little bit, um, I think that just makes our starting side and our players better. When you get, We also have an, another assistant newly on the team who played at Oklahoma State, and she's a great um, addition to our team just to bring that competitiveness to the practices to help kind of transition that into games. If you're playing against great people in practice and competitive people in practice, that'll only make you more successful for the games and the competition and who you're going to play. Of course, on as a coach, what are some of your accomplishments so far as an assistant coach? Well, I've only been here for um, about a year. So I haven't really been here that long. And um, our team has gone through some coaching changes, has gone through, ch obviously the COVID year has made a huge impact on so many schools around the country. Um, but this past year, we had a player that was in honorable men mention, All-American. So that was kind of fun to see someone else on our team accomplish that and be able to work so hard to reach those goals. Um, she is a player that I had played with for a long time. So I've kind of seen her transition over the years and get so much better as a player and as a person so that was fun to get to be with her for her last year and kind of coach her and give her as much advice as I could to help her be as successful as she could be. Can you talk about of course the championship culture that you've built upon as a coach from when you were a player? I would say coming to SMSU there was already a championship culture kind of set in stone there. Um, SMSU volleyball has been good for many years before I even got here. And I've been able to meet a lot of the players and being recruited here, I got to play with a lot of them and learn a lot from them. And so I think I kind of helped just continue that culture on. I know for myself, I'm a super competitive person. I hate losing and I will do whatever it takes to not lose. Um, and I think we have a lot of girls on our team that are like that. And I think that's what makes our team or has made our team successful in the past is we recruit players um, and we have players on our team that just want to win and are willing to work hard and do what it takes to win and continue success for players to come and for the program to continue to be su successful for years to come in the future. What are some of the game day traditions and routines that obviously at SMSU Volleyball has? Uh, I don't know if there's um, a lot of game day routines. I mean, we do, we try to do the same thing when it comes to like warm ups and stuff to kind of keep it the same for all the games. But um, besides that, there wasn't a ton of ritual. I'm not someone who's like super. Um, superstitious or anything either so I don't have a lot of pre-game rituals I just like to listen to music kind of get in my game day mode um, before I play but I think um, as a team we would just always make sure that we're prepared for the game whether that means making sure we're talking about our scouting reports beforehand making sure that everyone on our team whether they're playing or not is fully prepared um, for the games that are to come. What's the typical game day at SMSU look like as a coach versus when you were a player? As a coach, obviously there's a lot more logistical stuff that goes into it. You know, as a player, you just gotta get your uniform on, get all of your equipment on and warm up and be ready for a game. But as a coach, there's so much more that goes into it. Um, you know, scheduling stuff, having the scheduling practices, um, figuring out what we wanna do for pregame, um, what we're gonna talk about with the team, kind of the important aspects of the game. So I'd say, 
as a player, you don't really think about that stuff as much as you do as a coach. As a coach, you're always trying to think of, all right, how can we get these girls as prepared as we can to perform well in the game and to be able to be successful in the game and hopefully win the game is the end goal. So I'd say as a coach, you're thinking of a lot more different strategic things, a lot more lineups, who's going to play, where is each player going to be successful on the court. So that's just a lot more thinking that goes involved. Whereas when you're a player, there is a little bit of thinking, but you're also just trying to go out there and perform your best. Who are some people that you face in your conference? Concordia St. Paul is a huge one. They've been super successful um, in Division II volleyball throughout many years. Um, other than that, we Duluth, Minnesota Duluth is another one. Uh, Winona, Upper Iowa, a lot of Minnesota schools, um, Mankato, also South Dakota schools, South Dakota, US, or Augustana, USF, play some North Dakota schools in University of Minot and Mary. Um, but we don't really, have, we have to travel far, but it's nice that in our conference in division two conference, you don't have to travel as far. Most of our competition that we play is in the state of Minnesota, but we do go to some Iowa, um, South Dakota and North Dakota, as well as well as one Nebraska school. So it is nice that um, we don't have to travel as far as maybe a division one program would have to, where they're flying all over the country to games. What's that like, obviously, as a coach, getting to play some of those teams that you played as a player? Being out for a while, I obviously didn't know a lot of the players that were left. Obviously, when you're a player and you're playing those teams for four years, you're very familiar with the players on the team and kind of the success of the team. But coming in, especially, again, with the COVID year um, and not knowing a lot of the girls, it was kind of fun because it's kind of like a restart. You have to really get into your scouting reports and you have to learn more about the players. Obviously, a lot of the coaches were the same. So, and you know the history of the schools. So you know that they've been successful in the past. But I thought it was fun kind of to start over and kind of get to know different girls and get to scout them um, and just see kind of how the conference has been getting on since I have played. What does the recruitment process look like for those prospective college volleyball players looking to play? I think the recruitment process is different than it used to be. I think the internet plays a huge role in that. Um, anytime we are really getting recruiting information, it's through online um, information that recruits can fill out and automatically get sent to whatever school they want to. So I think that plays a huge role um, in the recruitment process. We've had a lot of people even in the past year that reach out with their information and I think it's a good way for perspective collegiate players to kind of get their name out there. They can send videos to any coach in the country that they want. So I think the internet is definitely at the advantage of the prospective collegiate players who are trying to get their name out there. Because a lot of the times in recruiting, um, coaches obviously don't travel to every high school in the state that they may be recruiting in to go see these players. I mean, there's so many players, so many schools. So a lot of players get found, whether it's at like a junior Olympic volleyball tournament, which is currently in season. I think a lot of coaches in the past have found girls from there and not a lot of girls. And I can speak from experience for myself growing up in a small town. Um, I probably didn't get as much recognition as someone who grew up in a bigger city who's playing at a bigger club. Um, so I'd say the internet is huge for players now because you can send your information, video, your huddle, whatever you have information on yourself to any coach in the country that you are trying to play for. And I think that is very beneficial for um, high school players in today's day and age. Of course, as a coach and alumni of the school, what are some of the things that you look at in these recruits when on the road? I'd say for me personally, I just love to see someone with a passion for the sport. Um, that's how I felt that I was. And I think that really helped me in my success was I was super competitive. I love to play. Um, I always wanted to be the best player out on the court. And I think that's a very admirable quality in someone who wants to play in college. Cause it's not easy playing college, whatever division you're in, isn't easy. It takes a lot of time um, and energy. 
to play for a college volleyball team. So I'd say just the passion for the game is so important because if you already don't have that at the high school level, it may be hard for you to continue that on at the collegiate level with the expectation and the time that you have to put into your sport. How's it like, obviously, as a coach, going out to obviously these big tournaments and seeing these future college athletes perform? I think it's so fun. Um, I haven't been in high school in a while. So just getting to go back and watch these young players play, it just reminds me of how much fun playing in high school really was. And I think you can learn a lot about someone from watching them play in high school. Uh, you can see their skill level is obviously important, but I don't think it is the biggest component and getting recruited because there's a lot of schools that are big on training once you get to college they don't mind if you don't have all the skill set there but if you're willing to work hard and you want to get there eventually there's so many coaches that are willing to work with you to help get you to the level that you want to be at of course what what does the official visit look like at smsu official visit um, at smsu Obviously, you're spending a lot of the time with the coaches, meeting with the coaches, but we also really try to incorporate any prospective recruits with our players. We want them to get to know who we are as a program as a whole and who our players are. Um, we will have them watch our practices or if they are able to play a little bit so we can see their skill level, but a lot of it revolves around them just getting to spend time with our team getting to see who they are as people and players and see if this really is the right fit for them, which I think is important as a recruit is to really get to know the program that you want to attend. You want to know the players, you want to know the coaches to make sure that it really is the right fit for you in the end. Of course, as a coach and alumni of the school, what is that like obviously seeing those recruits come on campus and fall in love with SMSU and get to put on that gold uniform? It's exciting. Um, it is exciting in the fact that we've built a culture for so long of success and being able to be successful in one of the best Division II conferences for volleyball in the country. Um, and we really just want more people to come and to continue that success to see how hard that previous players have worked to get the program to where it is. And hopefully these new players can come in and want to continue that culture and continue to be successful for years to come. What advice would you give those prospective student athletes looking to play college volleyball? I would say the biggest thing if you're trying to play college volleyball is like I kind of mentioned before to just have a passion for the sport and just have a willingness to want to get better. Um, no athlete in high school is going to be the same athlete after they go through college. You just continue to get better and better throughout the years. And you can really see how far you can take yourself with the hard work that you put in. So I'd say hard work is a huge thing. Coaches really want to see a player that was willing to come in and do the hard work and doesn't want to just skate by doing the bare minimum. So I'd say passion for the sport, hard work um, are two huge components at trying to get recruited to play collegiate volleyball. What advice would you give those future college volleyball players looking to play professionally, whether it's athletes on Lemonade, U.S. volleyball, or even internationally? I'd say one, um, I've always said it's who you know, not what you know. Um, so I'd say that's a big thing, one, networking yourself to be able to meet those people that could help you get to be able to play either while it's professionally overseas or even trying to play in the States. Um, I'd say you should always be wanting to get better because especially if you're at the level that I am, um, division two, there's not a lot of avenues for you after. I mean, you really have to be a really great player to get any recognition to have the potential to yeah play professionally whether it's in the states now or overseas so I just think you need to just work hard work your butt off um, and I think if you do that it will pay off in the end. What advice would you have those athletes looking to get into coaching either at their alma mater or even going from college player to a coach? I'd say understand that 
there is a transition, obviously. There's so many things you can do to get into coaching, even when you are at the high school or college level. Coaching JOs is a huge way to kind of get your foot in the door of coaching and kind of get a feel for if it is right for you or anything like that. I just think experience is a huge thing. Um, The more experience you get as a coach um, and the more success you have as a coach, that will just go so far for trying to get into coaching at the collegiate level, high school level, whatever you're trying to do as a coach. I just think the more experience you have, that's only going to help you in the long run. What advice would you have those college coaches such as yourself that are looking to coach at their alma mater? I'd say understand um, the transition, obviously, especially if you're going to be coaching people that you've played with or people you're very familiar with. But I think there is some pride that comes in it too, it being able to go from being a player to a coach. Um, You're already very familiar with the atmosphere, with the community, with the coaching staff. Um, So it is a very easy transition in that point, but kind of making your mark too as a coach and not only a player was a big thing for me. I didn't wanna just be successful as a player. I wanted to be able to continue that by being able to coach players and kind of give them my perspective on what it takes to be a successful player, I think that really meant a lot to me that I not only got to give that to myself as a player, but I got to help other players um, maybe be successful for their future as well. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with SMSU's volleyball program at? Um, SMSU, we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I think it's just SMSU volleyball, if I'm correct for those handles. Um, I'm on all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, my Instagram handle, I believe is just Taylor L or Tay L Reese at Tay L Reese. I'm pretty sure that's what both my Instagram and Twitter handles are, but yes, we are on all platforms. Um, and if anyone's ever trying to get in touch with coaching staff, just go on to SMSU volleyball website and they have a bunch of contact sheets where you can get in touch with any of the coaching staff or anyone that you're looking to get in contact with to talk more about the recruitment process or anything like that. Thank you again, Coach Taylor Reese, for your interview and best of luck in your future with SMSU's volleyball program. Thank you very much. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Taylor Reese, for your interview and best of luck in your future. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.